ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Noah Church. I was a horny little kid. I can admit that. There was never a time in my life when I wasn't fixated on women and girls. And at age nine or ten, I would say, I heard someone around me say the words, nude pictures. And that phrase stuck in my head. I know I wanted to get my hands on some of these nude pictures. I mean, I'd been lusting after the female form all my life. And with this, I would finally be able to see it. How could I do this? And then I realized my family had a computer. <laughs> with the internet. The internet has lots of stuff. Maybe it'll have nude pictures. <clears throat> of course, you've all been on the internet, so you probably know there are nude pictures there. <laughs> I'm sorry to shock any of you. So that's what I did. I looked, and that's what I found. And from that first Google image search, the rush was pretty incredible. And from that first search, I was hooked. And that was the start of my 15-year descent into the vortex of internet porn. Hmm. Some of you probably have some experience watching internet porn. And you probably know that it's different than anything that really came before these past 20 years. Like our dads might have rented a VHS tape with a few scenes or flipped through a Playboy. But before that, it would have been even harder. Like you might be lucky to find an erotic woodcut or, <laughs> or a naughty cave drawing. But internet porn, it's unlimited and it's bottomless. You can find, or I could find, anything I could imagine, and a lot of things I could not imagine before seeing it. And that's what I did. It's a Pandora's box filled with porn. And it's every laptop and every smartphone in the world, and I opened that box. And I lost myself in that box. And at first, simple nude pictures or erotic stories were more than enough to get me going. And then, after a while, that got boring, so escalated to videos of actual sex. Lesbian sex was a favorite. Oral sex, anal sex, escalated again. Gang bangs, group sex, bukkakis, rough sex, violent sex. And on and on into some pretty deviant shit. <laughs> and several times when I was a teenager, and I hope I'm not alone here, I would find something new and more extreme, more kinky on the internet, and I'd be a little disturbed, but pretty turned on, and I'd masturbate to it. And as soon as I finished orgasming, I'd think, ugh. What the hell did I just masturbate to? <laughs> I hear I'm not alone. I think I have some friends here. I wouldn't say that porn took over my life when I was a teenager, but it did start to fill up you know, the empty spaces between my thoughts and between moments, like, Instead of daydreaming about how I was going to ask out that girl I liked, I would daydream about what to search for next on the internet. Instead of putting myself out there into the world and taking risks and finding out who I was, I was just staying in and losing myself in artificial fantasy land. And somehow, by senior year, I managed to stumble into an actual relationship. Don't ask me why. Don't ask me why. Or how, or rather. But... She was a beautiful young girl, and we decided to have sex for the first time in the 45 minutes before her mom got home from work. <laughs> and I remember just being so happy to finally be in this moment. You know, I've been waiting for this my whole life. And I remember seeing her naked on the bed in front of me, just admiring how beautiful she was. But at the same time, I didn't feel that same carnal, savage desire I felt when I would masturbate or use porn. It was like there was this disconnect between what I wanted in my mind and how my body reacted. A no boner. And for any of you guys who have experienced impotence, it is a pretty fucking horrible feeling. It's like I was failing myself and I was failing her. And it was like I had lost something. I didn't know what it was or how I lost it, but I knew that without it, I was less than a man. And. This didn't just happen once, but over and over again. So I did what any one of my generation would do when confronted with a personal problem like this. I turned to Google, and I searched for answers. 
And what I found back then is that if I was healthy and I was young, and I was, then it had to be nerves getting in the way. And I did feel anxious, and I did feel frustrated, but I felt like that because I was impotent, not the other way around. And I remember I would go home afterwards and test myself with porn, see if I could get hard and get off to the computer. And I could. And, you know, what the hell did that mean? I could have sex with a computer but not with this woman I cared about? And I think the worst part about it was that I couldn't talk to her. I couldn't talk to anyone. I mean, the shame is just too big. And to say it out loud would make it too real. I wanted to seem strong even though inside, and especially though inside, I felt so weak. And the most I could say to her was, I guess I'm not ready to have sex. And with every failure, I felt more and more of my self-confidence just breaking down and slipping away. And I remember driving home from her house just so filled with rage and confusion and pounding on my steering wheel and just screaming, fuck, why, why? So I broke up with her. I just didn't want to feel that way anymore. I didn't want to handle that feeling. And the same thing ended every relationship of mine for the next few years. It was like no matter how much I tried with different women, I was just incapable of having sex. Though I was using porn this whole time. And I tried. At times, I thought maybe I'm just tired from masturbating all the time. So I'd quit watching porn and quit masturbating for a few weeks. But no, that didn't help either. So I thought that couldn't be the problem. And I just wanted to file all this back in my mind and forget about it after a while. I just wanted to live my life without obsessing over this thing, this issue. So I wasn't with anybody for a couple of years. I just wanted to focus on me. And then I think what I wanted most was not to see that look of confusion in her eyes and to feel that I knew it was going to happen again. And then about a year ago, I felt, I felt proud of myself. I mean, my life was coming together. I was doing good things. And I felt strong enough to face this again and search for answers again. So I searched out answers. And this time, I found that thousands of other young guys like me had been popping up all over the internet talking about these sexual dysfunctions they had developed. Either like me, they couldn't get hard for sex or they couldn't orgasm during sex or they just felt disconnected in their relationships, like they couldn't enjoy their partners the way they should be able to. And I read these, and just, just seeing that these stories were all so much like mine, and just knowing that I wasn't alone, not even knowing that there was an answer yet, just knowing that I wasn't alone, that lifted such a massive weight off of me that I didn't even know I was carrying around anymore. And I saw that all these guys had one thing in common, years of using internet porn. So I dove in and I tried to learn all this and I learned about this emerging research showing that internet porn used over years had physically altered my brain and rewired my sexuality away from real intimacy with women and toward a goddamn computer screen. And this wasn't entirely strange to me because I had studied neuroscience in college and I knew about neuroplasticity, which means that our brains can grow and change depending on how we use them. So I learned that when I see porn, I get a shot of dopamine. And dopamine is what gives us that need, that desire for things like fatty foods and hot mates. <laughs> and so I'd see porn, and my primitive brain would interpret it as dozens of hot women willing to do whatever I wanted. And that doesn't actually happen to me in real life. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> but that's how my brain interpreted porn. I got this huge surge of dopamine telling me to go pursue that till the end, lose myself in that. But of course, there is no end to internet porn. I could always go deeper, and that's what I did. And by indulging in that year after year, I was overloading my brain with this dopamine, and I was deadening the dopamine receptors responsible for picking up that signal and translating it into an actual arousal. And finally, it clicked. That's why. I could get off now to just extreme porn that would have disgusted me years earlier. It's because the signal from that, those simple nude pictures that I started with just wasn't strong enough to break through that broken gap. 
And that meant that when I finally had a real woman in front of me, naked, wanting to have sex with me, she just wasn't enough to break through that gap and give me arousal. So, of course, I had this moment of, well, great, my brain is broken. I broke it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> but then I realized, no, the brain is plastic. If I could break it, I could fix it. And that's what people were doing. Online, I read these stories of men who gave up porn and masturbating. And after months or up to a year, their sexual dysfunctions were reversing. And I immediately swore off porn for life. I mean, the thought of ever using it again made me sick after knowing how it had twisted my sexuality and ended so many relationships and opportunities. And knowing that I was finally on the right path, there was light at the end of the tunnel, and I was so filled with hope for the first time in a long time. And over the next weeks, I just felt filled with motivation and ambition and ideas for the future. It was like my brain was firing on all cylinders. It was incredible. And change is always invigorating to me, but this was different. It lasted. It kept getting better. It was like I was waking up. I started to enjoy my work, my day-to-day -day life more. I could write without procrastinating and trying to escape in video games and porn. I was feeling day-to-day -day emotions more vibrantly. I remember sitting in the back of a car with my family, and this news story came on over the radio. It was about a murder. And I just felt the reality of that so completely that I started to cry in the back seat. And I had to look out the window so no one would look at me and ask me what the hell was wrong with me. I was finally able to open up and connect more genuinely with the people in my life. I told people about all this. I told my friends. I told complete strangers. I told <laughs> my family and my parents. And I saw that as I was finally able to make myself vulnerable and open up this part of me that I kept inside for so long, all that shame was just falling away. And I was just able to walk around in the world with nothing to hide and nothing to fear. And that was liberating. So of course I was curious, like, how could all this emotional growth be happening just because I quit using porn, quit masturbating? So I researched it and I found that that dopaminergic system in my brain isn't just for driving me toward food and sex. It drives me toward relationships and social connection and achievement and life. And by beating that down over the years with this super stimulus, this porn, I've been graying out everything. I've been numbing myself. And by finally healing that part of me, it's like I was discovering who I should have been all along. And it was incredible. And of course, about now you're probably wondering where the hell is all the sex in this story? <laughs> it's supposed to be a night of sex stories, right? Well, shortly after I discovered all this information, I did meet a beautiful young woman and we clicked. And on our third date, we were running through Mount Tabor Park and I just felt this need to tell her about all this. I wanted to tell her. <laughs> I'll tell you. So, she was the first person I told. And I told her because I knew I wasn't gonna be ready to be a sexual partner for anyone for a while. And because I wanted to open up, I told her about when I was six and I asked my next door neighbor to have sex with me. I told her about watching porn for the first time when I was nine and I told her about all the women I'd been with and I'd hurt because I didn't understand myself because I was broken. I told her about finally finding what was wrong with me and what I was doing about it. And I more than half expected her to be scared away by all this. I mean, it's a lot of information for the third date. <laughs> but Instead, we fell in love. And I realized with her that I'd never been in love before. Not only because she was more special than anyone I'd been with, but because without porn in the way, I was finally able to feel that and to invest in her. And yeah, on day 72 of my journey away from porn, we had sex for the first time.
And at first it didn't work, like always. And it was because I built up all this negative energy around that moment before sex so many times. It just all came back and that killed any desire I had. But then, just lying there next to her afterwards, breathing her in and feeling her heartbeat, and that's one of my favorite feelings, by the way. I was just able to lose all of that and it wasn't about success or failure anymore, it was just about being with her. And I should tell you how much adjusting my brain and my body still had to do when I say that for the next more than a month, no matter how much we had sex, I didn't orgasm a single time. I had moved from porn-induced erectile dysfunction, as we called it on the internet, to porn-induced delayed ejaculation. But that didn't bother me because I knew I was moving in the right direction and I was just, I was loving her. And then, several months ago, that relationship ended, and I don't really know why, and I never saw her again. And that hurts still. And it would have been so easy when I felt that anger and that pain to just go back to porn, because I didn't just use because it felt good, without realizing I came to view porn as a way to run away from pain and loneliness. I would feel bad and I could just turn on porn and forget the world, forget myself, forget my problems, run away from everything and just lose myself for a few moments. But I didn't realize until this year that by running away from pain, I was cheating myself out of true joy. Like I can feel now by fighting through that pain. It's been 284 days since I stopped using porn. And what's really different now is that I feel awake. And being awake hurts, but it's also incredible. And despite all the pleasure that I could get from porn, looking back, I have no cherished memories of watching porn. Like all those hours and years transfixed to the screen and I built nothing positive with that. I indulged in fantasy all that time and I ran away from life, from reality. One genuine true moment with a woman now is for me worth more than 10,000 orgasms to some phantoms on a computer screen. Even when my relationships end and we never see each other again, Still, in that time we were together, we built something good. And those moments changed me for the better. And even when I'm not with anybody, which happens, I still feel more connected to every moment in my own life now. And every moment is more powerful without porn. And I love my life so much. I'm not running away from it anymore.